Let us consider a computer A and another computer named computer B. If the computer A or B wants to send messages to one another, it requires a medium, which is provided by our telephone cables. For a message from computer A to reach computer B is through a series of connections, that is, from computer A to telephone A and then to the telephone cables, which will be received by the telephone B and then to the computer B. But there is a problem in this continuity of this serial connection. And the problem is, once we have typed a message saying, Hi, how are you? The computer will convert and send the messages in the form of zeros and ones, which is the only language that the computer knows. That is, the binary language. But the telephone cannot understand the binary language because it sends and receives the messages only through the analog signals. Those analog signals cannot be understood by the computer. So, obviously, what we want is a translator. A black box named modulator, which converts the binary language into analog signals. A part of the problem has been solved. Now the messages can successfully send from a computer to a telephone with the help of the modulator. The telephone sends the messages to another telephone in the form of analog signal. And the next problem lies here. We require another kind of black box to demodulate the analog signals to binary language. A demodulator. Now, the message can be successfully sent from computer A to computer B, but it's just a one-way communication. We cannot get the reply. In order to get the reply, we have to set the whole setup from B to A. A modulator between computer B to telephone B. Analog signals from telephone B to telephone A. A demodulator between telephone A to computer A. As time passes, the modulator and demodulator combine together to form a single box named modem. Now we can send and receive messages. And it became two-way communication. Everything became possible with the help of the one and only modem.